Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Florida Tire Reef Experiment. An experiment which was supposed to tackle the lack of options for recycling tires back in the 1970s and also to promote wildlife in the Osborne Reef which actually ended up being incredibly detrimental and damaging to local wildlife. Artificial tire reefs are actually a fantastic example of how poorly understanding the environment and ecology and wildlife and how they all interact together can actually be very detrimental to wildlife itself. And even though you might be trying to help the environment and promote biodiversity and you know give back to the world by recycling, um, if it doesn't interact well with what you're putting it into, then you have exactly the sort of situation that happened in the Orsborn Tire Reef and where you have millions of tires just hurting the environment. So let's jump into it. In 1972, the Broward Artificial Reef Incorporation proposed an idea to create an artificial reef in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The idea of this was to dispose of old tires as well as to lure more game fish to the area. Similarly designed reefs had already been constructed in the northeastern United States, the neighbouring Gulf of Mexico, Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia as well as Africa. With a spokesman for the Broward Artificial Reef Incorporation stating that tires which were an aesthetic pollutant ashore could be recycled so to speak and to build up a fishing reef area at sea. Tire reefs were seen as a nice way I guess of dumping a load of tires into the ocean back in the 70s as there was no real way to recycle them yet and they were taking up a lot of space and landfills. The project which was approved by the Broward County government in 1974 was also endorsed by the US Army Corps of Engineers. In the spring of 1974 over a hundred private boats as well as the USS Trush which was a Bluebird class minesweeper in the Navy until 1975, dropped thousands of bundles of used tires held together by steel and nylon clips into the Osborne Reef just off the coast of Fort Lauderdale. The Goodyear tire blimp even showed up on the day to dump in a gold-plated used tire into the Osborne Reef. Approximately two million tires were dumped into the 36-acre Osborne Reef in order to improve wildlife. This However, um, unsurprisingly, it did not happen. Naturally, very little marine life latched onto the used tires, and frankly, what little did was quickly destroyed again as the steel clips that held the bundles together broke. Steel can, and in fact will actually, rust and corrode if exposed to seawater, which of course, it was exposed to seawater at the bottom of the ocean. And, you know, it would be great if engineers thought about that back in the 70s, but, you know, I guess it's a great way to dump tires. I think the fact of the matter is that tire reefs just don't work. Of the above mentioned ones, the ones in Malaysia and Indonesia and Florida, have all been nothing short of an ecological disaster. Not only in situ disasters where the tires break free and start hitting against natural coral reefs, but also because these areas are prone to hurricanes, they get dragged up by the water and the winds and get dumped on land again. Um, but of course, it, these reefs aren't necessarily just put in to promote the corals. Well, they are, I guess, to promote corals, but also because the corals are there, they act as um, a deterrent and they slow down the effects of hurricanes. So you can see why artificial reefs are popular and we'll get to it later on in the video, but I think it's more the tire reefs that are the problem rather than artificial reefs. So 27 years later, in 2001, it was decided that the tires were causing so much damage that they needed to be removed. In 2001, a $30,000 grant was granted from NOAA, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to facilitate the removal. In the end, that $30,000 was enough to remove just 1,600 tires from the reef costing roughly $17 per tire. The tire removals that occurred in 2001 acted as sort of a trial basis and a marker for how much it would cost to remove all the tires from the Osborne Reef. And in 2002, Florida and the Broward County government came together and they devised up um, a plan, or they set into action at least, a plan to remove the rest of the tires. And they estimated that somewhere near 
60 to 150 million would be required to remove all the remaining tires. In 2007, the Broward County government contacted the US Secretary of Defense about the Initiative Readiness Program. This brought in military divers for a real world salvaging uh, training program. So instead of salvaging during wartime, they were now using this real life experience to go and salvage tires at the bottom of the ocean to put them back up for training. With coordination from the military and the Coast Guard, they came together and came up with the most cost-effective way of removing the tires from the Osborne Reef, with the state of Florida footing the two million bill for transportation of the tires that were dredged up to a, na a nearby sawmill in Georgia. By the end of 2008, some 55,000 tires were dredged up from the Osborne Reef, transported to Georgia, shredded and used for fuel in a paper mill. By 2009, the military had stopped its involvement with the removal of tires from the Osborne Reef due to other obligations and it was estimated that some 72,000 tires had been removed in total or just about 3.7% of the total amount of tires that were dumped in which isn't a lot is it? In 2015 the state of Florida contacted the Industrial Divers Corporation to remove the tires from the reef and from 2015 to 2019, approximately 4.3 million was allocated to this project to remove tires from the reef. By the end of 2019, the Industrial Divers Corporation were removing somewhere between two to 5,000 tires a week and had accumulated some 250,000 tires altogether. By the end of 2019, some 16.2% of the two million tires had been removed in the, you know, almost 50 years since they were dumped in there. And at a rate of about 5,000 tires being removed every week, it would still take about six and a half years to remove all the tires. By 2021, another organisation, 4Ocean, announced their plan to retrieve tires from the Osborne Reef in a 34 acre area north of the original drop site. The clean up would be mostly funded by their $1 equals £1 initiative, in which for every dollar donated, they remove £1 of plastic from the ocean. 4Ocean teamed up with artist Ellie Goulding to share the recovery efforts. As a way of funding the project, 4Ocean are also now selling bracelets made of recovered tires for roughly $29 each. And they kind of look pretty cool to be fair. The proceeds of these have led to approximately 20 million pounds of plastic and trash being collected from the ocean since 2017. The clean up of the Osborne Reef will continue for a number of years with 4Ocean continuing to remove the tires and other plastics from the oceans as well. So yeah, that's probably the end of the video. Um, different one, I guess talking a bit more about how human experiments on the environment have gone wrong and purposely harmed it. Something I didn't go into in the video itself was, you know, it, this clearly was a project that was just, we're getting rid of loads of these towers because we don't have any way of getting rid of them. They're taking up land space and they're gonna greenwash it as a positive thing for the environment really. Um, because I, I don't know, maybe even probably in the 70s, they probably wouldn't have gotten away with dumping two million tires into the ocean without it being a good thing. But a bit of greenwashing and of course everyone agrees with it and the Goodyear tire comes along or the Goodyear blimp comes along and you know, it's a great publicity stunt and everything. But yeah, um, an interesting video. Um, the next video will actually be the strange and unusual Analyze Brook finale, like I promised in the Bison video. Um, that video is doing so well, by the way, and yeah, I'm really happy with how it's come out. I think by the time this video will come out, that'll be like the most second most watched video on the channel, um, which is insane for something, you know, really short, but I really enjoyed making that video. And uh, yeah, so as you can probably tell, got a bit more in the background now. Um, you're not just looking at a blank wall or a very messy background as my previous backgrounds were. Um, yeah, so anyway, I think that'll do it for today's video. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far, and um, yeah, cheers guys, we'll catch you later.